my name is Andre van der Merwe. I'm the marketing manager for, for BUI. Um, so I think I'll just kick things off uh, and then we can get going. So good morning and thank you for joining us. Um, we are chatting about manage detection and response from Microsoft and BUI this morning. Uh, on the call today, we've got Barry Painting, the uh, Chief Information Officer for uh, Travel IT. We've got Sanshu Sanka, Chief Architect Security for Microsoft, and Neil Duplessis, our BUI Cloud Security and Solutions Architect. Um, so they will be taking you through uh, the session today. Just briefly, um, this is what we will be chatting about, the importance of cybersecurity. Barry will uh, take us through their journey and um, experience a uh, quick view um, from their last sort of 12 to 18 months, uh, moving lots of workloads to Azure and, and, and what security impact that's had for them. Um, Sancho will then take us through some traditional uh, trends and uh, SOC challenges, as well as the evolution of modern SecOps. And Neil from BUI will take you guys through the managed detection and response solution. Um, and that is what we've got planned. So Barry, if you're ready, I will hand over to you. Thanks, Andre. Um, just to check, you can hear me. Yes, can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for the intro. Thanks for the opportunity. I will not keep your participants here for too long. Um, a quick intro to Travel IT. We we the largest player in the corporate uh, travel management game in South Africa. So essentially, travel management platform that uh, corporates and government entities use to manage all their travel-related uh, kind of activities. So essentially, on our platform, you log in, you can book a air, car, hotel, um, transfers, forex. We, we can. We integrate into bookings.com and Expedia, Safair, Kalula, um, most recently Lyft, the new airline here, all the GDSs. Anyway, take all this travel content and put it in front of you um, so that you, on a single kind of page, you can make the best travel choices that uh, essentially save money for your company and um, make sure that all your bookings and things are within policy, within the right hotels. And all of this is done uh, on a cloud-based solution, obviously hosted now in Azure. So in about in 2019, late 2019, we knew we wanted to move um, to Azure. Uh, we were with another third-party uh, cloud provider. Um, we were quite fortunate in that a lot of our technology was Microsoft tooling, so MS SQL and IS and other products of Microsoft BizTalk. And we've got a development skill in, in .NET and C Sharp, so it was quite a good fit uh, for Azure, but I suppose the three main driving factors, and certainly one of them was the security that uh, Azure um, offers, um, as well as the scalability and the resilience of that Azure infrastructure. Um, but we, we really needed those security credentials on Azure and that it has to offer. Um, because of the services we offer to the corporate and government clients, um, they demand a very high level of security from us. Uh, we typically house all their employee data. So we need those em that employee data to facilitate the travel. Um, and that in turn means uh, POPIA and GDPR requirements uh, need to be met by us. So after a lot of planning, um, through kind of late 2019, we, we moved our entire infrastructure to uh, Azure in about February of 2020. Um, it was a great comfort uh, knowing that uh, that BUI had such a close working relationship with Microsoft, and we certainly did lean on that during the migration phase. But uh, it all went very well, and um, we've been on on fully on Azure since February 2020, and since then just been improving and upgrading our platform on on Azure. Um, once we were on Azure, the real security journey actually began, though, because there are a whole host of security products like Security Center and Sentinel and Defender and Polis, Intune, a whole lot of regulatory scores that come out the box like Azure CRS, the SOC, SOC, the ISO 27001 PCI. I mean, they, they go on and on. Um, and Azure automatically intro, like inventories all your assets and the platform just continuously tells you 
where it finds a problem with a configuration or a missing patch or a, lacking a log file or a communication over HTTP. It, it, it writes its own baselines that establish, you know, what kind of communications are going on on your platform. And as soon as something new is provisioned, it alerts you to the fact that it's an unknown connection and, and, and make sure that you're aware of it and know what it's it's doing. So it's got this, this overarching kind of view of your environment that, that Azure gives you um, that I, I guess Microsoft and Azure with its powerful AI are continuously learning on on these security issues and they 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 use this to help you improve your security posture so one day we'll have a clean bill of health and the next security center will be telling us that we need to improve something and and lock something down further um, even though nothing's changed so that's uh that's very interesting when that happens um anything we kind of develop we deploy into our development and UAT environments also in azure and it all gets checked um, by those Azure processes before obviously we put into production. Um, so that security posture and program is, I don't think it's ever right. It's uh, its just this continuous ongoing evolution and maintenance that you would ignore at your own peril. Um, and in our journey, we didn't really want to hire a whole team of security experts. We've got uh, developers who are well-versed in secure code development, but we wanted to concentrate on that um, and improving the travel platform, but it, we needed to ensure that this uh, infrastructure and essentially our very dynamic platform with all these APIs remain secure. Um, so again, we've partnered with, with BUI for a second time. Um, we've had a lot of security strategy workshops and initiatives, and we use the BUI uh, SOC Center as well. Um, and we've got a quite a well planned out kind of three months, six months, twelve months, and um, a two year roadmap and strategy that we, we we have in place today with BUR. I mean, we we meet weekly on this roadmap and continuously implement and adjust it um, as this technology changes um, in order to keep our customers' um, assets safe on our platform. Um, Andre, I think um, I hope that's given you some insight into our Azure migration and security on Azure. Brilliant, Barry. Thanks very much. Um, there was one question from John. Uh, hi, Barry. What would you say was the biggest challenge moving to the cloud? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a silly one. <laughs> 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 the thing that caused us the biggest problem was actually just moving data around. Um, we, we didn't try and get too fancy with our Azure move. We actually, and, and that again would be a piece of advice, we, we kind of moved like for like. Look, we were move, moving Microsoft stuff around, so we weren't trying to move and upgrade. I think that, that is where you do hit some, some problems. Certain things, you, we couldn't avoid that, but we essentially moved um, our stuff up. But getting the data into Azure caused us uh, quite a lot of heartache just because the volume of data we had to move and, and the, the speed at which we could move it. On our existing platform where we used to be, we could only extricate that data sure. at a certain rate, and that just wasn't fast enough. Um, so uh, we had we did have two false starts before we actually did the move because we couldn't get the data out uh, fast enough. So you know you want as little downtime as possible in doing that migration. Um, it was a it was a big hurdle to cross. Once in Azure, yeah, it, it was fine and the platform is running really well um yeah and, and uh we it's just this journey never stops keep developing are you taking the time to chat to us sure it's a pleasure right okay next up is sanchu sanka he's the chief architect uh security compliance identity at microsoft services and mia um just a brief uh, intro for Sanchi has been involved with program management, security, and identity services for over 20 years. Um, I think I'll, ha I'll hand over to Sanchi and uh, he can take you guys through um, what he has to tell you. Thank you. Thanks, Andre. Um, again, just to reconfirm that you can hear me okay? 
Yes. Can you All right. Thanks, Andre. And then, and thanks, Barry. Thanks for sharing that uh, wonderful story around your um, move to Azure and how Microsoft Azure, uh, with all the security controls in place, were able to help you drive your business forward in a secure fashion. Um, and of super interest to me was some of the elements that you mentioned there uh, around resilience, around continuous security improvements, around the regulatory and the compliance policies that we have in Azure, all, all excellent points. So thanks for sharing, Barry. Um, just, just, <laughs> Just, just to continue the conversation here, um, I, I think most of us in this webinar understands that uh, the cybersecurity landscape is becoming extremely complex every year uh, with a large scale talent gap, right? So uh, in terms of uh, the cybersecurity staff, skilled staff, there is a global shortage and, and the need for the skilled professionals has greatly increased and the supply is just not cannot meet the current or the future demand. And if you then add on top of that, the uh, automation, lack of automation capabilities in, a tr in traditional tools, including the SIM solutions or including the endpoint detection and response solutions, that increases the workload that the SOC analysts have to manage on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Um, and what, we, what the reports are also saying is around um, how much time and, and effort and money customers are spending on their cybersecurity budget on the SOC solutions or security operation centers and the return of investment that they're getting from it is not uh, meaningful. Um, and the last, um, but also very one of the most important things is also the pandemic um, that's actually affected us for the last 18 to 24 months. That's actually uh, resulted in a, what we are seeing is a large uh, increase in the volume of attacks and the complexity of these attacks as well. So these are some of the trends that we are seeing. Um, now, if I just... Um, Go on to the, uh, some of the traditional SOC challenges that we are finding. Um, again, there are a number of um, SOC challenges um, that we have um, in the industry. And uh, we talked about some of this in the previous slide. Um, but I just wanted to call out one specific thing around here, which is around the too many disconnected products. Um, and, and we also call this as, an, as alert fatigue, right? Um, so security operation centers or SOCs see too many alerts from disconnected products. Now, because uh, enterprise SOCs typically have around dozens of security products uh, and each product generates a large volume of alerts. In isolation, these products often have you know, very high false positive rates. And the reason for that is there is, there is lack of integration or uh, correlation between the different events picked up by the different tools, right? And sometimes alerts, alert attacks fall through the cracks as well. So unfortunately, um, our legacy SIM solutions are functioning typically as kind of aggregators. So they don't, they don't help us increase response capabilities, but they merely act as aggregators, right? Um, so this is where uh, the enterprise SOCs need a way to integrate these different security products to reduce the noise, prioritize the alerts, and to enable a rapid investigation and response capabilities across your enterprise. Now, they, when I'm saying enterprises, not just mean your cloud solutions or your cloud uh, infrastructure or even the on-premises infrastructure, it needs to be across your digital estate, right? Whether it is in the cloud, whether it's an on-premises, whether it is a hybrid of both. There are other sort of challenges that is also mentioned here um, around sophistication of threats. We have we are rapidly, you know, we are seeing a large number of attacks that is extremely complex and sophisticated. That we need really the modern tools, the modern security operation center methods to actually address or or uh, contain some of these threats happening as well. And lack of automation in some of these tools is not helping either. Um, this is just a slide just to remind ourselves around how attack services are cheap um, for, the, for the hacker. Uh, most of the attack services are one-click services and require a very minimal effort from the buyer, right? So this is where the, the, we see an increasing number of attacks that's happening um, across, across the estate. Now, if you think about how a modern security operations function, I think Barry you know, rightly mentioned the word resilience when he was talking about Microsoft Azure and, and some of the capabilities that enable the business to move forward. Um, when we designed or when we were architecting our uh, IT solutions a few years back, we always had the mindset of 
kind of reliability, right? We have a lot of attributes from an architecture perspective and reliability was one of the top uh, top uh, attribute that we always consider design not to fail, right? And when we, uh, with the rapid adoption of the cloud technology, IT is now moving to more of a uh, design not to fail to design to recover quickly mindset. So, you know, if you think about from a, a but uh, the, the, the certain attributes and parameters that we monitor, um, you know, moving from a, you know um, this uh, the uh, from an availability and designed not to fail mindset to move into that mean time to failure. How do we actually become more resilient, uh, reduce the mean time to recover? That kind of a mindset is what IT is moving on to, right? And if you just keep that same mindset or similar posture for security, I think it is reasonable to say that we can no longer block every possible attack with a firewall that stands between our assets and the threats, right? So we must assume compromise and invest in protection and detection methods that actually uh, addresses every possible or every um, phase of you know, what we call as a kill chain, right? And the overall concept is that we need to make sure that our security posture must be resilient to compromise. Now this assume compromise mindset, again, this is something that we are um, seeing and, and, and recommending our customers to, to make sure that you know, their security posture is designed in a way that, that's actually able to recover quickly with that assume compromise mindset. If we move forward, some of the traditional challenges, uh, again, thinking about um, the, the different challenges that we have from a, from a corporate SOC perspective, um, the classic model which is the traditional model, we had some number of challenges with the SIM solution, right? The, the idea was with the SIM solution, the idea was to centralize the events from all of these different tools into a SIM solution, right? Now, because of the massive amount of events, the organizations have to choose which one to store and which one to ignore or which one to delete, right? And But the, the amount of single events having too much for analysts to, to manually even correlate this prob, these, these different events coming across. So what do they do? We we create workflows to manually to automate some of the correlation of information. But as with every uh, workflow created, it's extremely important that these workflows require high level of expertise to create them. But even after we create them, we need to make sure that that is managed as well, right? Because with the with the rapid change of uh, the threat landscape, so this manual build correlation could not address all the threats and contain the gaps either due to the errors made during the workflows or because the workflows were not updated to reflect the latest threats, right? And this is where the classic SIM model struggled to deal with the new attack types, you know, including the malwareless attacks or fileless attacks. Um, uh, and the SOC analyst could be easily overloaded by an attacker, right? So to address some of these challenges, this is where um, the Microsoft, uh, when we, started this journey of a modern SOC solution, one of the first and the foremost thing that we did was to, how do we increase the responsiveness and remediation speed by adopting some of the new cloud technologies? Now, when you are actually addressing a threat, speed is the essence, right? So very classical SIM solution, you would over, I mean, every possibly every, or most of the same solutions, they, the marketing will talk about how um, quick and, and, and rapid the, the uh, log analytics will happen, right? Analysis of the logs will happen. Um, and, and sometimes what happens is by the time the logs are collected, the logs are analyzed by the engine, um, there is a little bit of um, uh, delay in terms of analyzing these logs. And when we are dealing with rapid and complex threats, this delay is a major problem, right? So this is where, when we started our journey from a Microsoft perspective, one of the key things that we focused was on this SOC responsiveness and remediation speed. And so what we did was to address these challenges, what we did was we introduced the cloud data lake and the machine learning technology so that we can more efficiently store and analyze the events, right? The second change that we did was around the, the specialized tools. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see the endpoints, you know, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint or Microsoft Defender for Identity or my, uh, Defender for Office 365, Cloud App Security, Azure Security Center. So some of these very specialized tools is something that we introduced into our platform as well, right? 
you 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 know some of these uh, tools you might already be using but some of these tools are already or could also be available for you and you're not using or some of the tools you may want to consider for your for your enterprise as well again the intention here is to make sure that when you are actually considering a modern SOC solution, you have the specialized tools who, you know, that really understands what's happening within that solution stack. Uh, but also, you also need something as a breadth tool that can actually correlate all the events generated by the specialized tools and actually can give you a unified view across the enterprise, right? And this is where um, the, the Azure Sentinel, along with this, the specialized tools comes in handy. Uh, Azure Sentinel makes it easy for us to collect the security data across, again, as I said, the hybrid organization. So not just on-premises or not just cloud or not just even Azure. Um, you can think about Microsoft Sentinel being that breadth tool to provide you that unified view across a multi-cloud, a hybrid environment. Right, so that's what Azure um, Sentinel can do for you. And again, you know, being a cloud solution and a cloud native sim, um, all the analytics happens in the cloud, which means that you can actually have the cloud speed, uh, th these analytics happening at cloud speed and scale as well. It can also it also supports um, default data connectors, so that you can integrate that with. For example, you have firewalls, proxies, um, and, and if you don't have a built-in data connector, it supports different APIs so that it can integrate with your on-premises um, services as well. Just as a uh, summary, so what we are talking about here is from a modern SOC perspective, and when we are thinking about a Microsoft security stock, stack, um, uh, what is important is we need to have the specialist specialized tools. So Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Identity, of Defender for Office, Microsoft Cloud App Security, Azure Security Center, or Azure Defender. So these are the specialized tools. And then you have Sentinel acting as a breadth tool that is performing the SIM and the automation and remediation capabilities across the data sources um, uh, that, that is actually connected to, right? So that's the kind of the Microsoft security stack and the story around modern SOC um, when, we are, when we are looking to address this complex uh, threat landscape, right? Any questions so far? I know I talked a bit, so I just wanted to take a pause and see if there are any questions at this point. Andre, anything on the, on the chat window? So I think carry on. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. So we talked about the depth tools. We talked about the breadth uh, view as well. Now, um, from a learning perspective, again, you know, no, no organization is different, right? And Microsoft is the same. So like you all, we also went through this journey. And some of the learnings that we had was one, the tooling. So we talked about that in depth in the last few slides around the breadth tool and the depth tools. Um, it's also important to have that culture um, shift as well, the mind shift, right? And Barry talked about uh, some of this uh, while answering one of the questions uh, from John. Um, around, around how do we actually move workloads from a traditional on-premise as well to Azure? Now, for every organization, that could be different. And you know, Barry kindly shared the learnings that he had from it, which is absolutely great. Um, and I think from a from a security perspective, it's a very similar, right? We need to make sure that we can actually reduce as much as manual effort as possible by automating some of this, um, which is extremely important from a SOC analyst perspective. It also helps the SOC analyst to focus on the right things rather than focusing on the false positives that they need to manage. And also focusing on the right metrics is also key, right? So when you are moving to a cloud solution, when you are moving to a modern SOC solution, rather than focusing on purely on the, the old traditional way of monitoring and managing your, your solution, it's extremely important that you update your metrics so that you focus on the right metrics that works for your business, right? Um, this is again just a refresher, refreshing slide in terms of the different data sources that Azure Sentinel supports. We talked about all of it, I believe, um, in terms of it, it, it's that it's, it not only supports the Microsoft services, but it also the, supports other clouds and your own premises workloads as well. I'll, I'll skip through this slide, but basically what it's trying to do is uh, it's trying to uh, tell us a, a story around how Sentinel actually helped 
Microsoft and in terms of reducing the false positives and in terms of um, increasing the effectiveness of the XDR stack and thereby increasing the overall SOC solution for us, right, for Microsoft. So um, again, just a, 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 from in terms of how Sentinel and XDR solution helped Microsoft and, and our customers and is helping our customers in terms of, uh, you know, modernizing their SOC operations. So the managed detection and response services, uh, we talked about the different tools that we have. This solution, what we have, or the services that we have, is around how do we, okay, now it's great that we actually uh, have these different tools, but how do we actually you know, help you as a customer in terms of uh, managing the solution forward? And this is where the managed detection and response services comes in handy, right? So as part of this service services solution, uh, we have, we are, we are help, trying to help our customers with three key outcomes or benefits. The, one, the first one is around modernizing your security operation center with all the latest tools that we talked about so far, with all the, the right processes and, and the change management practices in place. So that's the modern modernizing the security operation center. The second key outcome is around unified security posture. So again, we briefly touched on that earlier in terms of it's not just about managing your on-premises or it's not just about managing a cloud or even not even a single cloud vendor like Azure. It's, it's around managing your entire estate, right? And having that unified posture is extremely important for us to actually make sure that you are you know, staying that one step ahead of the game. And the last, um, the third outcome is also around reducing the downtime and um, exposure and risk, right? So this is again, reducing that, that business continuity risk um, to make sure that from a business perspective, you can actually continue to run your business without necessarily worrying too much about what's happening from a, from a threat perspective, what's, you know, with, with the full confidence that you have someone looking at your threats and what's happening across your enterprise that you can run your business for your needs rather than worrying about security operations center. Yeah, right. So this is the kind of three key outcomes that we are looking to provide to our customers using the managed detection and response uh, services. Um, again, as the name suggests, it's a managed service, which means that we will. Uh, the, one of the first things that we will come and do is help you implement those those tools. So. Uh, modernizing your security operations center. So tooling is one part of it, but we will also be focusing on the people and the process aspect as well, so that you have the right process in place to run these tools. And then we will manage these services for you for the desired um, period of time as well, right? So that's kind of the managed uh, detection service uh, response services. Um, just as a, 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 again, this is a very strategic partnership between Microsoft and BUI here, right? So what Microsoft Consulting Services, MCS, will bring in is actually our experience working with customers worldwide. So we, we work with enterprise customers and, and customers globally and, and we have a very uh, dedicated team focusing on cybersecurity. So this is the experience that we are bringing to the table. Uh, we also help customers with quite a lot of compromise recovery scenarios. Again, we take all of that learnings and bringing in that technical leadership with the tool sets that we have. That's the Microsoft, that's what Microsoft is bringing to the table. From a BUI perspective, Again, um, Neil will be talking about BUI capabilities later in this session, but, but BUI has got many years of experience operating you know, highly skilled uh, services for, for their customers um, around this space. So that's what BUI brings in, right? That, that, that experience operating a managed service for, for their customers. Um, the BUI has also got a great library of use cases, great library of um, scenarios that they typically handle. So again, the, the, the automation part of it, automating a lot of manual tasks that you would otherwise have to do it you know, using a SOC list manually, I think that's again a key value that BUI is bringing to the table. And this is where Microsoft and BUI are very complementary partners who can provide you the kind of the best of the both worlds, right? Both technology, the experience that working with the global customers, and also the management experience that BUI is bringing and the automation capabilities that they have. Um, from a from a from a, again from a, an approach perspective for the solution, um, 
I think again, Barry touched on a, a great point around this not being a one-time activity in terms of security. It should be taken seen as a journey. It should be seen as a continuous security improvement mindset. Um, this is where the security advisor role comes in, right? So we don't want to just you know come in, do the um, tools deployment, and then you know um, disappear, or we don't want to kind of manage it just with the game security mindset we had. You know, two years back. So what we want to do is help customers like yourself um, have that continuous security mindset. Make sure that we can actually rapidly adopt to the evolving landscape as well. So that's the role of the security advisor. Um, and the other elements are around enabling the threat protection technologies, enabling the security operations, and then operating this for the desired con uh, period of period of time. So that's a kind of at a high level the activities that we are that that we will do as part of this solution um, again just as a as a summary in terms of the different capabilities that we have um, um, again uh, th this is a managed detection service uh, managed detection response service solution right so what that actually means is you know if, if you think about these some of the challenges that we talked about initially around industry challenges in in terms of the traditional challenges what we are looking to do is help customers overcome some of those challenges or most of those challenges as well right so this this slide talks about you know, the, it gives you a summary of what we talked about so far in terms of the tool sets, in terms of the managed detection response offering as well, or the solution as well. Um, this slide talks about a high-level approach in terms of how we are um, helping our customers with this um, solution. So typically, we start with a discovery and the plan phase, which is around working with yourself, understand your organizational goals and expected outcomes. Um, we will also be looking to do the SOC, um, your current SOC maturity so that we can actually help you the right way. So that's the discovery and the plan phase. And during the onboard and enable phase, we'll be looking to implement those tools implement those people and the process uh, methods that we defined during the discovery and plan and the onboard phase we'll be looking to implement that using the onboard and enable phase during the migration and transition. So this is the phase where if you have an existing SIM solution, we'll be looking to help you migrate that to Sentinel um, and our platform so that you can actually run that using the latest tools. And then the manage and operate phase is, is all about running um, the managed service for you. I think uh, that's all I wanted to quickly um, chat to you about uh, today. Um, before I hand it over to Neil, uh, is there any other questions? Anything that you want to discuss? Nothing on the chat, Sanchi. Um, the guys are right. welcome to just drop any questions on the chat um, and we can answer them there. All right. With that, I'll then hand it over to Neil. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, Neil, over to All you, Sanjay. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, yeah, thanks, uh, Andre. You can um, just uh, make my screen live there. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sanju. So I think, uh, you know, talking about the BUI component, uh, as, as you saw in the previous slide, that, um, that, green, that green slide over there, I think what we are you know, mostly going to talk about is how we do, how we combine the great technology that Microsoft uh, is is uh, uh, making available as part of the solution. How do we combine that or integrate that with our people and process side of things? Um, so, for those of you that have not yet um, uh, met. BUI or, or that are unfamiliar with the organization, um, this this slide is is definitely one of my favorites and it gives a, a very good overview but not only an overview of who we are and what we do but also reveals a little bit about our culture so starting at the top left there um, you know we have uh, uh, we've been around for for a, for a long time and we've got over 20 years of the of cloud and security security uh, security capability um, you know go, of course like I said going going back 20 years We've also, for that same time, uh, been a very long-standing Microsoft Gold partner. In fact, they're an award-winning partner. You can see some of our awards there at the bottom right. And, uh, uh, you know, so you know, things like 16 Gold competencies, um, but also uh, a few that are... Uh, 
at a, another level completely. Things like the uh, security and manageability elite partnership, um, as well as uh, Azure expert managed service provider status. Um, we were the, the first one uh, in Africa and um, uh, you know we're very proud of that. And it's also, it's not easy to, to achieve those things. It really takes uh, a lot of commitment and um, a, a lot of proven track record uh, to to obtain these uh, these awards and these certifications. In terms of what we do, generally speaking, you you already heard about um, uh, Barry Travel IT. That's the case study at the top right there. Um, but also in terms of uh, what we do, our products and services, we focus on three main things: cloud infrastructure, uh, modern workplace, and then the all important and of course the topic for today cyber security and we uh, we have a, a cyber SOC a security operations center where we conduct security operations on behalf of and definitely in partnership with our customers and we of course leverage all of the tools that you that you heard about so far in this uh, in this presentation to to achieve that all right so let's look at uh, at some of those in a in a little bit more detail so um uh, looking at our our differentiators uh, and you know really the the messaging here is um why you should uh, entrust us with your safety with your cyber security um and of course like like we said we have a very um, close relationship with microsoft uh we have uh, uh, proven expertise and, and years of experience in implementing their products and also uh, conducting operations uh, using their, their product set. Um, we, of course, uh, have uh, uh, certified security professionals in, in a variety of, uh, you know, just cybersecurity fields in the network, on servers, uh, in security management, things like CISSP, uh, penetration testing, these kinds of, uh, you know, all, all of the security professional certifications uh, that, that you know, is, ex is expected here, um, as well as uh, experienced cloud security professionals, right? So uh, we spoke about this um, then and now mindset, you know, the, the old focus areas of, of IT and maybe also security versus the new focus area, um, you know, uh, focusing on protection in the, you know, in the old paradigm versus focusing on not only protection, but also detection, response and remediation, uh, this post breach mindset as, uh, as it's become uh, known. So definitely this, um, this modern approach, the experience with modern cybersecurity, I think is what really sets us apart. Of course, in terms of what we are going to be doing, the managed detection response side, I think there's a few things that we need to focus on here. Um, firstly, coverage, integration, and optimization. So absolutely, one of the key factors here is, yes, being able to be effective at cybersecurity. So we spoke about this um, depth and breadth, right? So the... Um, uh, uh, wide coverage and also deep coverage. Uh, so definitely to be able to understand both those languages is critical. This requires, of course, some integration work. And again, here we leverage some of the great tools Microsoft has made available that makes integration a much easier thing to do in modern teams, in modern security operations, as opposed to how it was uh, maybe as as as, uh, as recently as as five years ago, um, the that game has completely changed um, uh, for the better, and also optimization. So not only do we want to be highly effective, but we also want to be as efficient as possible. We need to deal somehow with this cyber skills shortage that is uh, you know that's affecting that's affecting all of us. So optimization or or driving efficiencies of operation um, is not only about the time to respond. Obviously, we want to respond as quickly as possible to, to incidents. That speaks more to effectiveness, I think. But efficiency, being able to do that um, uh, as efficiently as possible is, is key for us. And we invest a lot of time and attention in optimization and, uh, and these kinds of technologies on these platforms. Of course, bar for the course, 
detect threats, respond to them, and especially in, in cases where there's major outbreaks or major attacks, uh, perform remediation, get back to business as usual as quickly as possible. So that's sort of at the core, you know, the backbone of what we do every day. We're also, in addition to leveraging things like machine learning, artificial intelligence, these uh, highly advanced detection capabilities, um, we also want to allow or bring in the human element. So instead of just looking at all of our security data, or I should say, in addition to looking at all of our uh, security data and finding threats within that data, identifying threats within the data, we also want to do the reverse. We want to start from a cybersecurity hypothesis uh, or maybe a, a general investigation. Uh, maybe there's a, a brand new attack technique um, that is starting to... Uh, the, you know, that the world is starting to experience and we want to do an investigation uh, to see how vulnerable are we to such a technique. So it's not necessarily vulnerability as in, you know, is a certain server or system vulnerable to a to an exploit. It's more, are we vulnerable to a technique or to a set of techniques or a strategy of cyber attack? This is what we focus on in threat hunting. It used to be the... Um, only the, the most advanced security <laughs> operations teams would actually conduct threat hunting and it was very, uh, a very expert level uh, activity. Um, today, uh, that also, just like the, the uh, integration and optimization uh, component, that has been greatly enhanced. It is much easier to conduct threat hunting today, which is great. It allows us mu much more opportunity to actually conduct this human-driven investigation, um, uh, to as a as you know uh, an, an augment to the machine-driven detection, uh, machine learning-driven detection that that we of course also have. Again, speaking about this idea of driving not only effectiveness but also efficiency is automation, uh, and uh, you might uh, hear this referred to as as playbooks. So automation via workflow or playbooks, um, both built in, so automated straight into the system, especially in those deep uh, integrated systems. So the defender for endpoint, defender for identity, defender for office. So these deeply integrated security products specializing in certain areas, certain domains in the enterprise. Automation within those platforms, absolutely. We want to... Uh, minimize or even eliminate the time from detection to response. Um, and where necessary, bring in our human investigators, our security analysts uh, at various levels. Um, but so, so the built-in automation, as well as the augmented uh, automations that we want to build in or customize, bespoke automations that really fit in to how you as an organization uh, conduct security operations. So we, of course, are going to help you put this in place if, if you maybe haven't uh, haven't done that yet. Um, but of course, uh, if you have a certain way of doing things, we find this all the time with our customers, we want to integrate with your way of doing things. We want to make sure that um, we align to, to your own strategy, your own cybersecurity standards maybe, um, and how, how that uh, affects uh, or how we could work together. So being able to do both built-in automation and bespoke automation or playbooks is critical to, again, driving this effectiveness and efficiency of security operations. All right, a little bit of what we do. Um, so you will, of course, recognize a lot of these things. So starting on the left-hand side, the configuration detection incident response. That's what this whole conversation has been about so far. So yes, absolutely, we do these things. Configure uh, the SIM, configure the platform, configure these optimizations. Uh, and again, do that with the intention of driving effectiveness and efficiency detection, uh, especially speedy detection um, and automated response, incident response, both from an automated point of view, as well as a 
human point of view or a human intervention point of view and establishing a very smooth uh, integration between those things. How much of the response is conducted by uh, automation and how, at what point do we start adding human expertise uh, in, into this process? So making sure that all of that works very, very smoothly and within the guaranteed SLAs of the, of the managed detection and response service Yes, and I think this sort of goes without saying. Uh, anybody that conducts a SOC, even if you do it uh, internally, uh, that, that'll be uh, sort of par for the course. I think what sets us apart is our ability to take the next step, to really make this a holistic service, a holistic offering uh, to the customer. We already spoke about threat hunting, uh, the human first hypothesis driven detection mechanism, but also you know, so far the conversation is a lot about being about what do I do when things go wrong? What we also need to talk about is how do I prevent things from going wrong in the first place? And I think that's what really sets us apart because we um, give both of these ideas, both of these uh, motions, uh, a, first, a first class seat at the table. Right? So things like vulnerability management and security baselines is extremely important for us, both informed by uh, breaches so or attacks. So if we see attacks on a certain uh, endpoint or on a certain server or service within the organization, we absolutely want to do that continuous improvement and prevent those kinds of attacks happening in future, uh, or at least make sure that the mitigations that we have in place is able to uh, defend against those kinds of uh, attacks. Um, and also on a general, generalized basis, right? So this uh, habit of continuously improving security posture, continuously reducing the attack surface um, and the target area. Uh, we spend a lot of time and, and, and effort in that and we think of that as one of the key deliverables, one of the key capabilities that you must do in modern SOC. All right, lastly, uh, how we actually do this. So our uh, service delivery methodology. So we've got a tiered uh, response model, starting with tier one, what we uh, usually refer to as the triage tier, uh, rapid remediation and escalation. So that first responder uh, kind of solution. We rely a lot on automation here. Um, both, you know, not necessarily from a perspective of, um, you know, uh, the, the skills shortage, but more from a pr uh, perspective of speed. I want a response to uh, the moment I see a suspicious looking process on an endpoint. I want to automatically respond in seconds, maybe even in microseconds, right, uh, to that happening in real time and uh, and then bring in my, my human analyst where, where necessary. So this tier one, rapid remediation, triage, um, we, uh, we rely a lot on automation, uh, but not only automation, of course, we, we have a specific uh, human uh, intervention here as well. Of course, part of this, uh, that rapid response, um, you know, the paramedics arrive, uh, we also might need to escalate, right? The patient needs to go to hospital, <laughs> right? Um, so, uh, Going to tier two, advanced analysis and remediation. Again, uh, in some cases uh, being um, powered by automation, but here is really where we start assigning our security specialists um, to conduct, uh, you know, investigation, especially on higher complexity incidents or maybe uh, human-driven attacks as opposed to automated attacks. Um, and we also take advantage of the incident management uh, platform uh, that is built into. Uh, tools like like Sentinel and uh, and Microsoft 365 Defender and of course also Azure Defender. Lastly, our our, our following point of escalation is hunting or Tier Three um, uh, for both major incidents, right? So uh, major concerted attacks. We uh, we sometimes deal with this uh, from uh, you know if if it's uh, like nation state or syndicate or hacker group attacks that are specifically targeting uh, a customer. And also, uh, we already spoke about hunting our proactive mechanism. All of this, of course, is informed by threat intelligence, both built into the platform. And of course, we, we definitely take um, 
uh, you know, make a lot of effort in our human threat intelligence, uh, relying on the experience of, of our analysts. So, you know, the whole breadth from both strategic threat insights uh, to tactical threat in, insights, indicators of compromise, indicators of attack. So, of course, throughout this process and definitely built into the platform, um, we, we have uh, the threat intelligence that, that power our investigations. All right, so I hope that gave you a good overview of who we are, what we do, and also how we do it. Um, I'm going to hand over back to, to Paul here, and uh, he'll just talk about uh, a few next steps here. Thank you. So, yeah, guys, sorry, we're a little bit over time, uh, so I won't, I won't be another 30 seconds. So, next steps, work with BR, your Microsoft account rep. Um, we want to understand what your requirements are, um, you know, identify scope, and then obviously try and, try and help you guys understand where your threats are. So I think, I think that's it for today. Um, if you want to get in touch, we'll stay on the chat for a little bit longer um, or email, um, email us at sales at BUI. Um, and thanks for everyone for joining.